There is some very interesting new nuclear technology being developed by companies all around the world, in particular one revealed recently which claims if the disaster that happened in Japan had have happened with its nuclear reactors then it would have done nothing. There would have been no risk to the community. Now if that is actually true and these nuclear reactors do what this company says they do then I will have to change my position on being against nuclear energy because it sounds incredible. Hello my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking, great to see you. Now the reason that I generally disagree with the concept of a nuclear future is simply cost. Now there are other reasons, but the primary reason is cost. Nuclear projects blow out usually to being double the price and they usually take twice as long. So therefore, that is the key reason why we have reached peak nuclear. That could change if something like this, what this company says it can do, if it can do it, that could change. Now, if you're wondering about peak nuclear, I made a video about peak nuclear. There was a lot of research involved in that video. I'll put a link in the description below. We actually hit peak nuclear a few years ago. US technology Westinghouse has announced the launch of the AP300. It's a smaller version of its flagship AP1000 nuclear reactor. It's launching it in an effort to extend access to nuclear power as demand for clean energy rises. Now, Interesting engineering says that this US firm has unveiled a game-changing small nuclear reactor that can power 300,000 homes. And apparently it's easy and fairly quick in comparison to existing nuclear reactors to build. They say this is a game-changer technology. If the AP1000 had have been in operation in Fukushima, it would have been a total non-event. The AP300 nuclear reactor is scheduled to be operational in 2027 and will provide roughly one third of the power of the flagship AP1000 reactor, according to an official press release by the firm on Thursday. Now, the AP300 is the only small modular nuclear reactor offering available that is based on deployed operating and advanced reactor technology, said the president and CEO of Westinghouse. It says its nuclear fission reactor technology produces no greenhouse gas emissions and smaller nuclear reactors are less expensive and less time consuming to develop. The AP300 will cost around $1 billion per unit compared to the AP1000's anticipated cost of 6.8 billion. It'll produce 300 megawatts of energy compared to the AP1000's 1,200. So it makes a lot more sense, right? Because it's producing one quarter of the AP600's amount of power, but it costs about one seventh the price. So I don't know why I would even be talking about as big a generator because this one makes way more sense, if it makes any sense at all, that is. Industrial companies consider small nuclear reactors as carbon-free heat sources because they are more adaptable and versatile. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission must approve the AP300 before it can be made accessible to customers in the US by 2027. But the company is quite optimistic. This is what they said. We have absolute confidence because the NRC has already licensed every bit of this technology. Transmission lines are essentially exhausted in the United States. And small reactors can be connected to the electrical grid more efficiently, they say. New power sources frequently require an update in transmission capacity, thus connecting them can take years. It would be simpler to replace one coal plant with an AP300 nuclear reactor since it will generate nearly the same amount of power as a typical coal plant, said a CNBC report. Now I'm gonna give you my take on that claim at the end of this video. I've got a few things that I think that um, maybe could be an alternative to this. Now the company told CNBC, unlike the previous generation of nuclear power plants, which were only used by large integrated utilities, the size of the advanced reactors, which range from micro reactors of a half megawatt to 300 megawatts or more, makes sense. This means that there is a significantly larger number of utilities that can actually utilize these reactors. The AP300 has the same security measures as the AP1000, said the company. Both types of passive cooling systems are extremely important because if they had been used in this way, this kind of technology in Fukushima, the company say 
it would not have had a nuclear disaster. The big issue here though, and this is the big problem I have with this idea, while it does make sense, the challenge here is this. The company are comparing the cost to build them today versus today's technology. Wind and solar today are incredibly cheap. They're the cheapest they've ever been. The company though says that these nuclear reactors would cost about the same amount. But the problem is that the cost of solar and wind has come down almost every single year for the last 70 years of history. How much will solar and wind cost in 2027 or 2030 when these are actually deployed? I mean, it's going to take a couple of years to build them out. So wind and solar by that time, in combination with battery storage, may be a much possibly a cheaper option possibly also a safer option, possibly a better option. Let me know what you think in the comments and thank you for watching.